Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Do you remember why you had revolutions? Usually revolutions are when the mob, we, the people, think that uh, something that is not right is done by the leaders and we want to change. Usually that's what happens. We say, wait a minute, things are not the way they say it should, they should be and we did not agree with this. Something is going on. We want to change. This is when the revolution starts. And you try to work within the system first. And if you can't work within the system because the system is either corrupt or the system is uh, created in such a way that you have actually no power. Like for instance, let me give you an example. France and Macron. Macron by himself signed and uh, said from now on we change the pension reform. He said the pension reform. From, we're going to get from 62 to 64 or 65 the retirement age by himself. Everything was legal. That was within the system and the system allowed one person to put his signature on a law. He bypassed the France parliament France, and everything was legal. That's a way. That's one. The other one is when you see abuse, you know, and you see corruption. When you say, wait a minute, why do we want this? We voted for you to elect you over there to represent us and you are actually working against us. And then re you revolt. Now, the revolt could be big, so it could be sm small. It depends. Remember, all revolts started from a little bit and they grew like a, you know, um, how do you go, snowball going down. It was not like, oh, we all woke up in the morning and decided to go out and protest or, I don't know, uh, topple the government or something like that. No, it was a group that initiated and based on people's feelings of dissatisfaction, they built it. All right. So that's what's going on, I think, and it's bad what's going on, bad for the Russians. What happened in Russia? Um, the Russians decided, I don't know what kind of authorities decided to get refugees from Israel. So Israeli refugees transported by plane into and dropped in Russia. In this case, in Dagestan. Dagestan, you remember uh, Khabib, Khabib and Islam Makachev? Right, they are from Dagestan. I'm going to show you a map where Dagestan is. So some authorities decided that these refugees can come over there or maybe they have dual citizenship and they decided to return to uh, the country where they were born because usually that's the way it goes. And these guys in Dagestan, they stormed an airport and they did not want these guys to get off the airplane. It's like, for instance, you would have uh, Biden administration agreeing to allow illegal immigrants crossing into the United States and release them into the country. And you think, wait a minute, I didn't vote for that. Maybe you did, but some people did not. And those people say, wait a minute, these guys are just released in the, in the country. They are supposed to return to uh, face a judge uh, in six months or three months, which they will not. Most of them, I'm <laughs> okay. All right. And then they work illegally and so on. And that's fine with, uh, with them. They, that's, an, uh, how should I put it? that's a good point for them, but not for the Americans. Or the Americans don't understand that's going to bite them in the ass. All right. But hey, go and vote. So what happened here? Let me show you. You got a mob. Uh, so a group of people doing this. So the telegraph mob looking for Jews storms a Russian airport and surrounds plane landing from Israel. So an angry mob, people, angry people. I mean, these are, you know, they're angry. Come out there by the airplane, and they will be dispersed by the uh, you know riot police and so on. So a mob of several hundred people stormed an airport in the predominantly Muslim region of. Dagestan. All right, Dagestan is right here. So this is the Caucasus. This is Turkey. This is the Black Sea, Caspian Sea. I'm going to show you a bigger map from a little bit from, you know, zoomed out. So Dagestan is right here. That's all right. So this is by Chechnya, Dagestan, this area this is Georgia, Azerbaijan. So like this, it's right here in this area. This is by the Caspian Sea, Black Sea, Ukraine is over there. This is the Crimean Peninsula right here in the north, Turkey. This is Israel. So from here, they were landing here. Like a lot of planes are landing in Florida. And who's paying? Go and see the Santis for that. All right, so here is where they landed, these guys. So predominantly Muslim uh, 
region uh, of Dagestan in Russia looking for Jews on a plane landing from Israel. The crowd broke in through Makachkala airport, tearing, tearing down the doors and smashing windows after hear, hearing that a flight from Israel had arrived. Video shown from uh, within the mob showed. And here are the guys going around. Look at that. Why did we that why did they get to this point? I'm not talking about getting over there. Why did they have to have these guys surround the plane? Who made a decision? You can say, well, it's just a number of people. All men and young. All right, I don't see any. I don't know why they're talking. I don't want to go uh, into. Uh, it's just not violent. Not violent. I didn't see any violence. You see any violence? I don't see anything. And it says he's breaking a lynch mob. There was a lynch mob. Well, it's not a. You know, but they didn't seem to. You know, they could have done much worse than that. And I'm going to show you why. At the beginning, you see this right here. That little ladder over there, right there. That guy got on the on the wing, but that could be used. They could bring it over there and you know do more than this. And I know in Dagestan you kind of have uh, AK forty sevens. Uh, just watch some videos, okay, and you're gonna realize. So passengers locked inside surrounded plane. So anti-Israel group storms Russian airport. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Mob storms Russian airport looking for Israelis, and they show us this picture right here. <laughs> okay, what am I supposed to do? What, what's that picture showing? Is that uh, Chechenia? Is that uh, Pal Palestine? Is that Gaza? What is it? I don't, that doesn't look like Israel to me. You know, all right, just to, to start with that one. There is growing anger in many countries over Israel assault on the Gaza Strip and its bid to destroy Hamas. Well, the thing is, if they would try to fight Hamas, there would be one thing. Unfortunately, pictures and videos of civilians being blown up, brought to the hospitals and uh, neighborhoods flattened. That's not fighting Hamas. That's, you know, you know what it is. A mob looking for Israelis and Jews, Israelis and Jews, overran an airport in Russia, Caucasus Republic of Dagestan on Sunday after rumors spread the flight was arriving from Israel. The violence in the mostly Muslim, the violence. Maybe it was violence, which erupted amid the war between. Oh, that's the other thing. I thought it was there. They were talking about this one. The government of Dagestan promised that those responsible for the incidents will be punished. Though dozens of uh, protesters, many of them chanting uh, Allah Akbar, God is great, broke through the doors and barriers with some running out of the running, according to the videos posted. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah, the situation is under control because it says that uh, it closed the airport to incoming and ongoing flights. So, what do you think, my friends? Did the American do the same thing when planes uh, with illegal immigrants landed in the uh, United States, uh, sent by whomever? No, no. The beer is still flowing. Still have electricity. Still have jobs. That's good. Why should I go outside? Maybe some other guys can uh, go and yap around and uh, you know draw attention to certain things because I'm too comfortable sitting on my couch and eating my chips and uh, drinking my beer and uh, that's it keep my mouth shut man <laughs> i live through life like a that's fine you stay there i'm gonna use you that's what we want to do like in any uh, revolution in a revolution it's like this you have the initiators the planners then you have the guys who are waiting for the planners to exist you know, but they don't know how, but they say, I hope there are some planners or something. And then when that thing's, oh, where are they? And they jump around and it grows. And then you have people who are dissatisfied with the situation and then they join in. And there are people who are dragged in. And there are people like bystanders and just go around and, and so on. And are the, the ones who really stay home and say they root for the revolution to succeed. And there's some of them who don't really give a fuck and then they are the, op and then it's the opposition. All right, so that's the way it goes. Um, each and every revolution started with, them, as I said, small, tough nucleus. So, what's going to be, um, oh, what's going to go on over there? <laughs> they build here, right here at the bottom. It says, one protester 
could be seen in videos holding a sign reading child killers have no place in Dagestan. Well, he's uh, uh, mostly peacefully uh, protesting, right? So if that happens in Dagestan, Dagestan, I mean, what should they do? Again, there's a coincidence, and I'm going to talk maybe in another video about this coincidence. Coincidence. About two weeks, two weeks before uh, September, uh, September, uh, October 7th, the American government decided to uh, uh, lift a requirement for Israelis to have a visa entering in the United States of America. That means they can just jump, jump on a plane and come to United America without a visa or something, requesting a visa for a period of time. So that was lifted. And then in two weeks, boom, these guys have the stupidity at uh, October 7th. And then boom, the Americans are sending planes, charter planes, to, um, they say, evacuate Israelis and bring them to United States of America. They don't require a visa. They don't need a visa. So they can just jump on whatever plane and go to America whenever they want. It's just a coincidence. I just, uh, no. But it's a good coincidence for the Israelis. They can always go and come and go here. Anyway, my friends, here it is in Dagestan, and uh, there's a lot of uh, protests around the world. I saw one in London, big one. I saw one in Pakistan, big one. Uh, in Turkey, big one. This is not good news for uh, these guys who try to keep a lead on reality and truth. Why? They try, they try, but uh, this, you see what's going on here? This, and not only this, uh, telephones, the pictures, the videos that you can submit and send, uh, you know, and so on. This destroy the big liars. The big liars don't have the majority now of the market of the information. And they try to destroy all of us or everything else so they can again get a grip on the being the you know gatekeepers of the truth and reality. And they're so angry. But they have money. And they try to pay the weasels over there. Oh, I'm sorry, campaign and, um, you know, uh, lobby the politicians to uh, you know you can't say that you can't say that we're gonna limit this we can limit that only we are allowed to give you the reality you no you can't so they they lost it the, the gene is out of the box but they can put it back if they want with no problem why they can remember what was that uh, uh, parlor was parlor the one who was just banned just like this, could not use any communication, taken off the... Uh, you, could, you couldn't find it. Parlor, I think it was, when they said something or they did something, it did not exist. The same they can do if they want with Twitter tomorrow. They can take care of Twitter X if they want in an hour. Very easy, very easy. With everything, with YouTube, if they want YouTube, it doesn't exist tomorrow. You will never be able to access it if they want. So I think it was Parlor. Anyway, so... That, that tell that they didn't get that point yet. They didn't why because uh, it still can uh, control things, and you have the strata of population with below eighty six IQ, which is always going to be there, and pff, you don't need uh, you know these kind of things. You got a CNN for that. Thank you very much for being me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.